And hello and welcome, my name is Martin, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about uh, navigation invokers. Uh, the reason why we might want to use a navigation invoker is imagine that we have a very large world. Uh, so let's say, let's zoom out quite a bit, and let's say that I wanted to place enemies all over this place, right? Um, with the navigation mesh, this would be quite a very large area. That, that would be a little bit too much for, uh, for my computer to be able to handle uh, all the different planes and then all the different ticks and then all the different ways, uh, maybe all the different enemies that are going to be on that floor. Uh, because essentially what it has to do is it has to check for everything that's green. So each one of these little guys is going to have to check the entire game area to see if your condition fits or it doesn't fit for whether they need to come to you or whether they don't need to come to you as, as the as the way that we've set up the enemy so far. Um, so that uh, ends up becoming a problem because it takes a lot of processing power for your computer to be able to generate all those uh, all those events and well not even events all all the uh, calculations in the background that would be running to ensure that your character would then be seen by it. So what we can do is instead of defining an entire area as a mesh, which we still have to do, we're we're going to increase the area of the mesh itself of the navigation mesh, but we uh, we will make it to where each one of the enemies only has a small area around each one of them that we can control by uh, setting up a radius and uh, that radius will then be the green area that's lit. So they, that, uh, that enemy only has to check the immediate area around it. If we're not in that immediate area around them, well, then we're not, gonna, we're not going to trigger whatever their event is, and they don't have to check the entire board. They can just check the small area around them. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go to Settings, and we need to go to project settings and we'll need to scroll down to the bottom until you see navigation systems on the left hand side and uh, underneath navigation enforcing you'll see an, uh, a option called generate navigation only around navigation invokers so let's go ahead and click yes and that's all we have to do here so let's go ahead and close and now you'll see that the green area that I was working in is now gone um, if we tried to play right now, even though these characters were on a mesh and that mesh is technically still there, they are not, uh, they are not moving towards me because they do not have what's called a navigation invoker placed on them. Uh, that guy should respawn somewhere. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, so, navigation invoker. So, with the settings being done, what we need to do now is actually go into each one of the area meshes, right? So, each one of these, um, remember there was area 1, area 2, and then the shared area. So, I have area 1, area 2, and the shared area. So, I'm going to go into the first one, and uh, I'm going to go into the mesh. And inside of the, the mesh, and let me go ahead and clear these two out. Okay, so we're going into, um, okay, what is that one called too? Anyway, so we're going into the, uh, the mesh itself, the one that has the, uh, the explosion and the respawning. So this one, and what we want to do is we want to add a component. And in that component, let's type in invoker, and you'll see that you get one that's called navigation invoker. So when the navigation, so once you've got it in there, go ahead and click on it. And over here in the details panel, you'll actually see an area, a radius around it. And what we want to do is let's set this up to 200. Let's just do a small one for now. Okay. And let's hit compile and save. So now when you go out, you'll see that this object has a area around it, which is 200. And this air, this object also had an area around it. Uh, now, because both of the areas were being shared, it looks kind of weird in this mode. Uh, you may have to go back and what, what is called rebuild the paths. So you see underneath uh, build, you know how we've done lighting before where we just did lighting? Well, here you can build just the paths again. So if you build just the paths again, you should...
anyways you know what and I don't even know which one of these these guys are so let me go ahead and just delete these for a second and make sure that I have the right one so let's drop one of these on there okay so I've set up one on the floor and what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this so basically what's gonna happen is and actually let's set this guy up say somewhere around right there so like the point is close to the M so we know uh, and that the other point is past the N so let's push play theoretically it should not be moving towards me I'm going to navigate around it to the side remember that we said that the box was close to the letter N so I'm going to move inside the letter N and at this point we have a dead done okay Let's see if we push play now. Maybe it just wasn't settled in right. Okay, let's see which AI is things being controlled by. Okay, so there's no AI on this. That's probably why that wasn't working. So let's attach this back to AI1. And let's go ahead and hit compile and save. Maybe in copying it or doing something that I was messing around with earlier that got messed up but let's play now okay so I'm gonna move into the area and it did indeed come towards me we should see it spawn somewhere maybe that's why last time the other one didn't respawn and it may not be respawning the right one okay but anyways uh, let's try that again remember where the area is we've got it right here with the end so let's push play okay I'm going to move around it. I'm going to move in and behind it. I'm inside the area. It moves and it comes towards me. Okay, fantastic. So that was an invoker. Let's do the same thing for a couple of the other meshes. So we have a couple more of these things on, on site. So let's go to H-Missile, H-Missile 2. Let's go to H-Missile 2. We'll add, go to component. Again, it's going to be nav. There is invoker. So we're going to add that in. Let's make this one 200 by 200. Let's hit compile and save. And that's technically all we have to do. Let's do the same thing to the third one. Oh, and you know what? Let's make sure that this guy is seeing the right AI. And it is, so that's good, because it wasn't doing it in number one. And let's go to three, go here. We'll check, make sure it's on three AI. We'll add component nav invoker click on the invoker switch that to 200 by 200 okay so now we'll hit compile and save make sure that the other ones are saved and that the other one is saved okay so now that all three of those are there let's add a few of these where did we go to the floor We'll add a three out here. Let's add a two. Over here, we'll push play. We'll go into the area for one. You'll see that that one attacked me. We'll go into the area for another one. You'll see that that one attacked me. Now you notice that the other one moved a little bit, and that's because all the nav meshes are still connected to each other. So the second you go into the area for one, if they were sharing that area, let's see, there's one. So A1 is really messed up. It's just not respawning either, so it must be attached to the wrong, to the wrong AI. Okay, so that is nav mesh invokers and how to set them up individually to each one of the individual uh, players or individual enemies. And that this way, only when you come within a certain distance away from them, obviously this distance could be bigger, 
Um, it could be smaller. It really just depends on what you're doing with your level in your game. In this area, it made sense to have them a little bit smaller. Um, and that's it. All right. So hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.